Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on this Ninja 10 Cup Specialty Coffee Maker with the Glass Carafe, model number CM401. So this coffee maker has been around for a while. It comes with a removable reservoir. It's got like a nice handle. You can pick the reservoir up. You can fill it up. It's got a nice lid here. Put the water. Be careful that can come off. It's got a pretty nice display. It's got a nice clock. You've got a power button here to turn it on with. It can do six different sizes. It can do a cup, extra large cup travel mug, big travel mug, half carafe, and a full carafe. So when you've got it on the carafe, it turns the warming plate on. When you're doing a cup, you can brew right into a cup and it won't turn, it won't turn the warming plate on, but you've got this nice little um, tray that comes down. And then it's got four brews. One, two, three, four. It's got a classic brew, a rich brew, over ice, and a specialty brew. That's like a concentrated espresso shot. Four ounces when you want to make lattes and cappuccinos. It's got a clean button. It also will tell you when it's time to descale. And when you're ready to brew, you just, whatever uh, brew you want to do, that's, you just press that and it starts the brew. But we're going to stop the brew. So again, this is a 10 cup glass carafe. Here's the lid, it's got that funnel, so when the coffee that it brews, it, it kind of puts it down towards the bottom of the coffee pot to help with mixing it. This comes off, but you gotta turn it all the way around. So putting this on can be kind of tricky. You gotta, the arrow has to start. You wanna end up here, but it has to start over here, and then you'll turn it, and then it'll snap. So it feels really nice. Um, the glass seems, it's a little thin, but not too bad. And again, this has a warming plate, and it's got that tray. Let's do some quick measurements. So almost eight inches for a big travel mug. With the tray is five and a half inches. So if you're not used, this, is, this coffee maker has a, a manual drip stop. So you'll see there's a water symbol with a line through it. So what that is, like a, like a Mr. Coffee has a plunger at the bottom with a spring on it. So when you take this coffee pot out, if there's, if there's water still in here, it's going to drip. But if you put this to, to drip stop, it stops the water from coming out the bottom of the um, filter basket. But to, in order to brew coffee, you've got to have it over there. So the coffee maker takes a number four cone filter. It comes with a reusable filter. This is a permanent reusable filter. That's like a, a metal, really, really fine material. Here's your filter basket. There's that plunger at the bottom. And what happens is, is when that drip stop, it, it opens and closes the bottom of that funnel. So you can use a number four cone filter, a paper filter, eight to 12 cup, but you cannot use both at the same time. So it's either this, the permanent filter, or the paper filter. And they go in there. This has a really nice, it kind of slides in and out. I like how that works. So around here we do have a scoop and there's a storage for it. It's got some nice markings on it for specialty. It tells you two scoops, three to four for a half carafe, four to six for a full carafe. And on the other side is for when you want to do little uh, cups or travel mugs. So it's pretty nice. It does have a built-in frother now, it doesn't heat the milk, but it does froth the milk. And all you gotta do is press this button. And it's a, it's a really nice frother because it's very easy to clean up. So I can just take this out, take this over the sink, clean that all up. It goes on very simple. And it only froths when you're holding that button down. And it stores away. So left to right is about 12 inches. Front to back is almost nine, eight and a half, nine inches. And so this coffee maker is only 15 inches tall. It will fit under a kitchen cabinet. You do have to lift it up to this reservoir a little bit in order to remove it. But it's a pretty nicely designed reservoir. I do like that's a pretty nice handle. And it slides on there. Again, there's the flip top. Yeah, overall, this is a really sharp looking uh, coffee maker. I like that see-through design. Here's what the back looks like. And it takes just a standard two-prong uh, plug-in. So this is part of Ninja came out to uh, be pod-free, they called it. 
you can kind of make a lot of drinks without using a K-cup or a specialty pot. This only uses coffee grounds and a filter. It does come with a quick start guide. And here's, the manual is pretty decent. It's got pictures and it does kind of describe everything. All the different brews, how to program it, how to set it up, how to descale it. I'm gonna do a separate video on descaling this with vinegar. So I think this coffee maker, it makes great coffee. It's gonna come in handy if you wanna brew into a travel mug. That's a very nice feature. The specialty drink is okay, but you gotta warm your milk up. So, but it's not too bad. I'll warm the milk up in the microwave and then you can froth it with the frother and then you can do a specialty. So that part works really well. It's just, it doesn't heat the milk to make your cappuccino and latte. And it does make a really nice 10 cup pot of coffee too. So let's, let's make some coffee. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a, a pot of coffee, then we'll make a iced coffee, and then we'll make a specialty coffee, like a cappuccino. So this just takes standard drip coffee maker ground at a medium grind. So there's what a medium grind looks like. You can use medium roast, breakfast roast. I just happen to like Dunkin' uh, Donuts medium roast right now. So this scoop, even though this looks big, it's just the big side is two tablespoons. The small side is one tablespoon. So I'm going to, and then here again, I'm going to do a half a craft. See that symbol for half a, three to four of the big scoop. A full pot would be four to six of the big scoop. So that would equate to eight to 12 tablespoons if you were going to do a full pot. So I've got my water tank filled up. Pull this out like this. You have to have a filter in here. Again, either a this or a paper filter and if you put a paper filter in this is a cone shape so make sure you smash it down so that it's hugging both sides and then you're going to put your coffee grounds right there i'm going to use the reusable filter now you do get a little bit of sediment in your coffee you don't get any sediment when you use a paper filter okay so i'm going to do a half a pot five cups so i'm going to put four four of these big ones in There's where the coffee goes. So you'll get, you'll get used to making sure this drip stop is open. If you leave it closed, it's gonna beep at you to let you know I'm not, I can't start the brew until the, the drip stop is open. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna select, you're gonna turn it on, hit the power button right there. And so when you hit the power button, see the little drip stop light is lit? If I try to do a, a brew, it beeps at me. It says, hey, you, you gotta do the drip stop. So now, Go ahead and just open the drip stop. Now, once I move that drip stop, see the drip stop light went out? Now I'm gonna select, what do I wanna do? I wanna do a half a carafe. I'm gonna do a classic brew. So I just, when I wanna start the brew, I just press the classic brew, and that's sort of pulsing. That lets me know that it's brewing. They stay warm, that light comes on to let me know that the warming plate's coming on. So now we'll time this and we'll do some temperature checks and we'll do a taste test. Okay, so it started brewing within about 20, 30 seconds. I've got coffee coming out the bottom. Okay, so it sounded like it paused. So it brewed for about 30 seconds and it paused. Now it's starting back up again. So it paused for maybe five or 10 seconds. So after, the, after that initial pause, it hasn't paused again. It's kind of a steady brew. You don't hear a, it's not super loud right now. So let's do a temperature check. So the water coming out the bottom is about 199. That's really hot. So I can use this drip stop during a brew. So say, see how it's got some coffee in it already? Say I wanna grab a quick cup of coffee. Just throw this to drip stop. It stops the brew process. It stops water coming in and you'll see some steam come out. I can grab my cup of coffee, put this back, and then to continue the brew, everything's kind of flashing over here to let me know something's wrong. Go back to drip stop. Then it starts brewing again. So I do get a little bit of steam up, to, up at the top, but not much. So it does have a warning light to let me know that the, the, the warming plate is warm, so be careful. 
Okay, so that took about five minutes to brew that five cups of coffee. So that's about standard, about a cup a minute. So a full pot would take about 10 minutes, but it's gonna continue to drip for a while. So this is where that drip stop is so important. So say, cause it's done now, and I wanna, I wanna, rem I wanna get a cup of coffee, I'm definitely gonna wanna hit that drip stop or you're gonna sit there and, and drip. So now that it's done brewing its coffee, it's gonna keep that, that stay warm light is lit. That's gonna stay on to let you know that that warming plate is on. It'll shut the warming plate off automatically from zero to four hours. And you can vary that time. The default is two hours, but you can change how long that warming plate stays on. But you can also turn the warming plate off. And here's a nice feature that many coffee makers don't have. So say it turns off on you automatically, but you wanna warm that coffee back up. You can turn the warming plate on without doing a brew. That's a very nice feature. So say that coffee cooled down, you wanna turn the warming plate back on. That just turns the warming plate on. Okay, so let's see how the craft pours. Oops. So you get really used to doing that drip stop. Pours pretty good, not bad. Let's do a temperature check. 175, that's a very hot cup of coffee. A very hot cup of coffee. There's what it looks like. Again, this is a, a light to medium roast Dunkin' Donuts. So let's taste it, they're really hot. That's a, that's a very good cup of coffee. Ninja coffee makers make, make very good cups of coffee. Now again, after two hours, this whole machine will just shut down. It'll turn the warming plate off, but I can vary that from zero to four hours. Let's go up here and see how the coffee did. So there's the coffee grounds. It got a little high in the filter basket, not too bad. But cleanup is very easy. You're just gonna lift this up and take this over. You can recycle those coffee grounds or dump those in the trash can. But So cleanup is very simple. All three of these parts are dishwasher safe, top rack. Now I wanna show you some of that sediment. We used a reusable filter. There's that sediment I was telling you about that you get. You don't get that when you use a uh, paper filter. So I don't, you know, set, um, sediment's not bad for you. And I do think it adds a little bit of flavor to the coffee. It does make the coffee taste a little bit better, but you may be wondering what that is. Okay, so let's talk about over ice now. When if I do a rich brew, it just, it just takes a little bit longer for the brew. The water is still the same temperature, but it just brews a little bit longer. Over ice now is different. And it's different in the quantity of the water it's going to brew. It's assuming you're going to have ice and it's going to melt the ice. That's going to add to the water. So you don't, it doesn't brew as much water. So you got this over ice section. When I do, so say when I do an extra large, in the classic, it's 18 ounces. In the rich, it's 16 ounces. So it does change the ounces a little bit when you do a rich brew. It's kind of hard to tell though, but over ice, you're definitely going to notice. So, when you do a multi-service, it's normally 18 ounce extra large travel mug. When you do over ice, it's 7.3 ounces. But they want you to fill a container with ice, so you need an 18 ounce container filled with ice. It's gonna brew 7.3 ounces into that container, and you'll end up with a less than 18 ounces but because it's gonna melt that ice. And that's, that's why it brews such a strong coffee. Okay, so now let's brew an over ice. So when we do over ice, again, it's going to brew. So I always say it brews half the quantity of the coffee. So you're not supposed to brew into a glass cup. So if you want to do like a cup or a, a travel mug, do it into a plastic one or, or even a metal one, but don't do a, a glass cup. They say this glass is okay to use because it's tempered for it. So I'm going to do a half a craft of iced coffee. So whatever quantity you're going to put, fill it up that much with ice. So if I was going to do a full pot of over ice, I would fill this entire thing up with ice because what's it's not going to brew a full pot of coffee. When you do a full pot, it only brews half a pot. So it's going to brew, you'll have a bunch of ice in here, but the ice will melt. It'll make room for that coffee. I'm going to do a half a pot, which seems to be about the right amount for just like, like two people. So fill whatever 
So whatever quantity you're gonna brew, fill that up with ice. So I've got half a pot full of ice. It's gonna brew a, like a quarter of a pot into this half a pot. So you'll end up with a half a pot of over ice iced coffee. But even though we're brew, it's only gonna brew a like it's only gonna brew a quarter of a pot, still use the same amount of coffee as if you were doing a half a pot. So whatever you've got this selected on, still use that amount of coffee. So I'm doing a half a pot, half a pot. So I'm gonna do three to four. I'll do four of these big scoops, which is eight tablespoons. Okay, you're gonna close this. Now we're gonna come over here, turn the coffee maker on, select your whatever size you're gonna brew. I'm gonna do a half a pot and hit the over ice button. That's when it starts brewing. Now the over ice feature, it does pause. So it's gonna brew for a little bit and pause. Brew for a little bit and then pause. That's normal. And one other thing, the stay warm light did not come on. It doesn't turn the warming plate on. Now that doesn't mean you won't see this come on. I have seen, cause sometimes the hot water coming out of there is, is so hot, it will turn that light on for a second or two. Um, that's okay because there's just a temp sensor in there that when the plate gets hot, it turns that little light on, but the coffee maker is not turning the warming plate on. So it's not gonna melt the ice by having the warming plate on. That's a very nice feature of this coffee maker. Okay, so it brewed for about 15 seconds and now it's stopped. The coffee maker gets really quiet. Now the coffee coming out of here is still 200 degrees. So it's gonna melt that ice really quick. Okay, so it paused for about eight to 10 seconds. And now it starts back up again. About 180, but it's gonna ramp up to 200 really quick. I had 200 here earlier. All right, let's check the final temperature. One ninety six, one ninety seven. That's very hot coming out of the bottom of there. Now this coffee maker does beep at you when it's done brewing. It just waits a little bit. So coffee will stop coming out and it takes about 30 seconds and then the coffee maker finally beeps at you. It's like three or four short little beeps. Okay, so it's done. It's still dripping a little bit. It hasn't beeped at me yet, but it's obviously done and it's brewed, so you end up with a half a pot of iced coffee, yeah, but it's melted quite a bit of that ice. So there's the beeps, and it says the word end. So you're still gonna wanna hit the drip stop because there still may be a few more drips. There's your iced coffee. So let's pour a little bit into a cup and see how cold it is. So that iced coffee is I wish it was a little colder. That's still 50 degrees. I, a good iced coffee should be around f under 40. So what I do is grab you. Now you can grab you a glass or a, or a tumbler. Put some ice in it. You don't need as much ice as you would earlier. But now let's pour it in. Now this extra ice is really going to cool it down. You can see this makes just enough for about two people. Maybe three. So now after adding that ice, you end up under 40, which is really good. I, I like to add a little milk to my um, iced coffees. And then I like the French vanilla syrup. This is a really good tasting drink. I call it two tablespoons or two dashes. One, two. So if we mix that up, that's a very, let's, let's, let's mix it up and taste it. Okay, so I mixed it up and tasted it. It tastes very good. Um, it's a tad weak um, for me because you have to add so much ice. It is just a little bit weak. I do like cold brew coffee for my iced coffee, but this machine does make a very good iced coffee. And just by adding that little bit of extra ice, now this is a very cold drink and it's not melting the ice anymore. But we can see this has just been sitting here for just a little bit and it's pretty well melted the ice. See how it did with the coffee grounds? Oh yeah, nice. 
Okay, so now we're gonna make a cappuccino or latte using the specialty brew on this coffee maker. So I've already added my coffee grounds. It calls four. If you see the word specialty on this scoop, it says two. So that's four tablespoons or two big scoops. So you're using a lot of coffee grounds, but it's only gonna run four ounces of water through that. So it's gonna be a really concentrated coffee. And, and using dark roast or French roast tends to work a little bit better for these specialty drinks. I mean, you can use a medium roast and they, it tastes good, but you may be used to a, a darker roast at like Starbucks or something. So I've got my coffee in, I got my water filled up. Unfortunately, you do have to go heat this up in the microwave. So I've got, this is my milk. I'm gonna go heat it up in the microwave and then I'm gonna froth it. Okay, so heating, heating milk up in the microwave can be tricky, but that took about a minute for four ounces and it's, 100, it's 180. So I like to froth my milk first and then brew my um, specialty brew into the frothed milk. So transfer this to a, a glass you can froth. And now we're gonna froth. This is a very nice froth. You're gonna go right below the surface with the frother. It, it only froths when you press the button. You don't wanna go down too far and just kinda gently come up. Now the, the milk should expand almost to twice the quantity, but this can take a while and you gotta press the button the entire time. Again, just below the surface. Don't go too, too deep right below the surface and the milk should keep expanding. Okay, so I'm done frothing the milk. I'm gonna put it on this little shelf. I've got everything all set up, got it turned on. I gotta fix, I gotta pick what, oh, when you do specialty, it, it only brews four ounces. Okay, yeah, the drip stop. It doesn't matter what you've got the selector on. When you pick specialty brew, it doesn't brew any of these. It only brews four ounces. And the frother is very easy to clean. You're just gonna quarter turn it and it comes off. And here we have our specialty brew. It does pause this also. And then it's gonna finish brewing that four ounces in there. So it, it paused maybe 10 seconds. And it's pretty hot coming out of there, yeah. 183. Okay, so the machine beeped at us when it was done with the brew. And that's a very good tasting. Add some syrup to it or some um, pumpkin spice syrup or some white chocolate mocha, and you can have yourself a very nice latte or cappuccino. There's how the coffee grounds did. So we've made a pot of coffee, we've made a cappuccino or latte, and we've made an iced coffee. There's so many different sizes. There's six sizes you can choose from on all of those drinks except the, the specialty brew. Um, this is a very versatile coffee maker. It produces a very good cup of coffee. I do think it's kind of stylish. It has been around for a while. You know, if this had a way of heating, heating milk, it would be a really, really nice coffee maker. So the only part I saw was when you got to heat your own milk, but that didn't end up being that big a deal. Really nice frother. I'm going to do a separate video on all the controls. So you can adjust the, the warming plate, how long it stays on. It also has temperature. It's got a low or a medium and a high. Just two different temp two different temperatures for the warming plate that you can adjust. I'm going to show you how to, to uh, set the clock. I'm also going to show you how to set the program. So if you want to wake up in the morning to a fresh pot of coffee, I'll show you how to program it. And then, then again, don't forget this clean light down here. If this clean light comes on, that means it's time to descale. And I'm going to show you how to descale this. This has a cleaning mode that you got to put the maker in in order to descale it. Thanks everybody for watching.